Hi, in this video, we're going to have a short introduction to vectors. So what is a vector? Really, it's a vector quantity. And it has two important characteristics. First one, it has size or magnitude or length. And most importantly, it has to have a direction or an orientation. So it's got to have something that has some substance to it, and it's got to be pointing in a direction or have an orientation associated with it. So some examples would be uh, position. If I am three miles due south of the station, then the three miles, that's the magnitude, and due south is the orientation or direction. Velocity. So velocity is more than just speed. Speed is the magnitude of velocity. But velocity has the idea of not only how fast are you going, but in which direction are you going. And then forces, like electromagnetic, gravitational, or pressure forces. If you are pushing on something, you're pushing with a certain amount of force, and you're pushing in a certain direction. So let's get some terminology and notation. How do we write down vectors or represent vectors? Well, we use arrows. It really doesn't mean that a you know, vector is an arrow, but it's a good representation because the length of the arrow can be proportional to the size or the magnitude, and the direction of the arrow is the same direction of the vector. Now, when we write an arrow, we have an initial point, or we call it the tail, and we have a terminal point or final point, which is what we're going to call the head of the vector. Let's give this vector a name. We're going to call it V. And notice something crucial is that we have an arrow above V. Anytime you have a vector quantity, you must show that it's a vector quantity. If you are writing by hand, you have to put an arrow over the letter. Now, in the textbook and in some of my slides, instead of uh, using a V or a letter with an arrow over it, you may see just a bold faced letter. So the boldface V would represent a vector, while the regular V is going to be a scalar. And another thing that's important is that vectors really don't have position. I could take the same vector, move it over here, and that's the same vector V. It's just another copy of it. All right, let's do some arithmetic with vectors. If I want to multiply a vector by a scalar, well, wait a minute, what's a scalar? A scalar is just an ordinary number. And for our class, they'll always be real numbers. So suppose you have a scalar C and a vector V, and you multiply C times V. What you get is a new vector, we'll call it U, and how is u different from v? Well, the length of u has changed. It's now multiplied or scaled by the absolute value of c. And I say absolute value because multiplication by a scalar can also change the direction if the scalar is negative. If the scalar is negative, then the product of the scalar with the original vector is going to point in the opposite direction. So let's look at some examples. I had my original vector v here. I multiply it by 2. 2v two is going in the same direction. It's just twice as long. If I multiply by a half, now the length is half as long. If I multiply by negative 1, I really didn't change the length, but now the vector points in the opposite direction. 
If I multiply by negative 3, now the vector is 3 times as long and pointing in the opposite direction. We can add and subtract vectors graphically. So if I'm going to add two vectors, a and b, I'm going to use the following procedure. There's more than one way to do this, and if you're comfortable doing it a different way, that's not an issue. We're going to place the tail of b on the head of a and draw an arrow from the tail of a to the head of b. This new vector, we call it the resultant vector, is the sum a plus b. So here I have two vectors, a and b. So I'm going to go ahead and make a copy of a, make a copy of b, and place the tail of b on the head of a. And now I'll draw a vector from the tail of a over to the head of b. And that's my vector sum, a plus b. What about subtraction? Well, notice that we can define a vector opposite of v, so minus v. That's the same as taking negative 1 of times v. And um, we saw in our example that, OK, the opposite of v then has the same length as v, but points in the opposite direction. What if we add those two vectors together? So here's a vector v. Here's its opposite. So I'll take a copy of v. And then I'll take a copy of the opposite of v. I'm going to put the tail on the head of v. And when I do that, well, I should start from the tail of v and go to the head of the opposite of v, but they're on top of each other. The head and the tail are on the same point. Can we have that? Yes. It's a very special vector, a vector whose initial point and terminal point are the same. It's called the zero vector. Let me write that as zero, but as using vector notation. So here I wrote it using the bold face zero. Now the zero vector has a magnitude of zero, so zero length. And it really doesn't make any sense to assign as any specific direction to it. Uh, in a sense, we're going to see we can assign any direction that we want. And so if we take a vector and add its opposite, the result is the zero vector. So see how I wrote this zero vector with an arrow above it. So then subtraction is just going to be adding the opposite. So if I start with two vectors, u and v, and if I want to do u minus v, I'll take a copy of u. And then I will take the opposite of v and put the tail of the opposite of v on the head of u, and then draw my resulting vector. All right, uh, so far so good, just drawing pictures. Uh, unit vectors, now unit uh, comes from the idea of unity, uh, uh, it means one. And so a unit vector is a vector with length or magnitude one. Now, how do we show the length of a vector? Well, we either use single bars, like absolute value signs, or sometimes you'll see double bars used. That's more common in linear algebra. For our class, we are just going to use single bars as if it were absolute value. So if I'm given a vector v, which is probably not a unit vector, how can I turn it into a unit vector? Or how can I get a unit vector that points in the same direction as v? Well, v is pointing in the right direction. It just has the wrong length. And how do you change the length? You multiply by a scalar. What scalar would you want to multiply by? The reciprocal of its length. 
So if I take a vector and divide it by its original length, then that product is going to have length 1. Now, sometimes it's just more convenient to write the vector over a scalar like that, uh, even though technically uh, we don't have any rule for dividing by a scalar. Now, when we write unit vectors, sometimes instead of putting an arrow, we put this little hat or caret. Um, and that is just showing that not only is it a vector, but it's emphasizing that it is a unit vector. All right, now that we know about unit vectors, now there are some very special uh, unit vectors, the vectors that point in the same direction as the positive coordinate axes. That is, those are called unit coordinate vectors and or coordinate unit vectors, either one. So the unit vector that points in the same direction as the positive x-axis is represented by the letter i, and the unit vector which points in the same direction as the positive y-axis is represented by the letter j. So we could write those with arrows, or we could write them with hats. So now we come to a very, very important and useful idea. A super important idea. Without it, we would really not be able to do anything in vector analysis at all. And that is any vector in the plane can be written as the sum of a scalar multiple of i plus a scalar multiple of j. We can always write them as that sum of the product of the two unit coordinate vectors. And this works in 3D too. In 3D, we're going to have a third unit coordinate vector, which points in the same direction as the positive z-axis. And we use the letter k to represent that. And just like in the plane, any vector in space can be written as the sum of multiples of the three unit coordinate vectors. So let's just see this in the plane for a little bit. Um, so I have a vector a here. I'd like to write it as uh, the sum of multiples of i and j. So the grid helps me here. I can see that to go from the tail of a to the head, I'd have to go three i's and two j's. So a can be written as three i plus two j. And if I have this vector b, Doing the same work, I can see I would be going two i's and then in the opposite of two j's. So that would be two i minus two j. Now, by convention, we always write these sums in order. So my vector v, I put the i and then the j. And, my, and in 3D, this vector p, I put the two i plus j plus two k. It's always in alphabetical order. All right, so now if you're always going to write them in order, we can save ourselves a little bit of writing. And honestly, I think it's way more convenient is that instead of always writing the i, j, and the k, or the i and the j, we just write the coefficients on those vectors in these angle brackets. And these numbers, which we write in here, which are the coefficients on the i, j, and possibly k, those are called the components of the vector. So the components of p are 2, 1, 2. So we like to say the ith component, or the i component is 2, the j component is 1, and the k component is 2. But Sometimes I just say x, y, and z. Yeah, so it's, it's fine to think about it that way.
So now let's see how using components makes our computations so much simpler. So here we have two vectors. They're vectors in space. So all of the composition that we did previously was done uh, using vectors in the plane because it's easy to draw the pictures. Imagine if we were trying to add vectors by drawing pictures of the vectors and putting the head onto the tail like that in 3D. That would be very challenging. But with components, it's going to be quite simple. So let's take a look at at least uh, a copy of our first vector A. And uh, it's going to have components negative 2, 1, comma, and 2. So to get that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a vector from the origin out to the point P, which has coordinates negative 2, 1, comma, 2. That is going to be the same as the vector A. And that is such an important idea uh, that we call that vector the position vector for A. Now remember that vectors in general don't have position, but a position vector does. A position vector, by its name, tells you it has a particular position and its tail has to be on the origin. Now notice that the head is going to be a point that has the same coordinates as the components of the vector. Okay, so that's good to know. How does that help us? Well, now if I want to know the uh, magnitude of the vector a, or the length of the vector a, that's just the distance from o to the point p. So I can use the distance formula. So I will just take uh, the square root of the sum of the squares, because I'm just subtracting off 0 in each case. And then after doing some computations, that will just give me radical 9, which equals 3. So in general, if I have a vector with three components, v1, v2, and v3, I can calculate its length by taking the square root of the sum of the squares. So this is definitely a formula you want to have memorized. All right, let's look at the second calculation. We're going to calculate a vector c by taking 3 times a minus 2 times b. Doing this graphically in 3D would be very challenging, and it's unlikely we would be able to get a, a result easily. However, using the components, it's quite simple. Now, I've used some color coordination, which I agree is quite ugly, but it's going to get the point across. If I multiply a vector times a scalar, and I've written the vector in component form, I can just distribute the scalar to each component of the vector. So I'll multiply 3 times negative 2, 3 times 1, and 3 times 2. And over here, I'll multiply 2 times 1, then 2 times 3, and 2 times negative 1. After I've done that, now I still have a subtraction left. And how am I going to do that? I'm just going to subtract the corresponding components. So the first component, subtract the first component. Second component, subtract the second component. Third component, subtract the third component. And that was the point of the color that you could emphasize that we are subtracting corresponding components. If it had been addition, we would be adding the corresponding components to get our final result. So our last computation here is to find a unit vector u in the direction of the vector a. Well, remember, our strategy is to take the vector a and multiply it times the reciprocal of its length. 
And we actually already calculated the length. Remember, we just took the square root of the sum of the squares of the components and got 3. So we'll just take 1 over 3 and multiply it times a. Now, leaving it in this factored form is fine. In fact, usually it's a good idea. And so uh, maybe we want to get used to looking at it that way. But it's fine if we distribute the 1 third to every component to get negative 2 thirds, 1 third, and 2 thirds as our unit vector in the direction of A. Now, sometimes we call this uh, unit vector in the direction of A, we actually call it the direction of A. Uh, it's not really a direction, but it is the loose terminology that we use. All right, finally, Let's finish up. Suppose I have two points. I already have plotted the point negative 2, comma 1, comma 2. Let's go ahead and plot this other point, q, with coordinates 5, comma negative 1, comma 4. Got a slight mistake here. Now we want this z component to be positive. All right. So I want to plot that point 5 comma negative 1 comma 4. And I'd like to find the components of the vector pq. Now, what does this mean? That means the vector whose tail is at p and whose head is at q. Well, to help explain how I'm going to do that, I'd like to take copies of my vector op and my vector oq. And then I'm going to go ahead and draw in the vector pq. Now, I'm not going to try to use that to find its components. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to notice that, oh, in order to get to p, from P to Q, I could go directly, or I could take a more roundabout way, start at P, go down to O, and then go to Q. When I do that, I'm going in the opposite of P and in the same direction as Q. I mean the opposite of the vector OP in the same direction as OQ. So opposite of OP would be minus OP. In the same direction as OQ would be positive OQ. So I'm going to take positive OQ and negative OP. I could have written it as negative OP plus OQ but it's easier to think about it in the end as being OQ minus OP. And so once I've done that, I can just fill in the components and calculate what the result is. And the way to remember this is that we're going to take the head and subtract the tail.